Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Bright Author Connected 101 webinar. My name is Ray Brooksby. We're with BrightSign. Uh, also joining me on this call is Andy Fisher, our manager of Inside Sales. Andy will keep an eye on the on the uh, chat and Q and A box, and will do his best to answer any questions you post there. Uh, we are also recording this session, and uh, after the webinar concludes, I'll make sure that a link goes out to all of you who registered so that you can find the recording. We'll also put it on the webinars page at our website so that the recording will be available. This is an exciting uh, time for BrightSign because the new Bright Author Connected offers quite a few features that uh, have been on everyone's wish list for a, for a while. So I hope to touch on those. The topic for today though is, is, to, is to remain fairly basic. We're going to start <clears throat> uh, first with a brief comment on the fact that two versions of Bright Author now exist. Uh, the version you see depicted here on the left has, has been around for years and years and years, virtually since day one with BrightSign. We call it simply Bright Author. It's a Windows application. There's no Macintosh client available. But about a year and a half ago, we announced, and about six or 10 months ago, we made available in beta, uh, a new version of Bright Author we call Bright Author Connected, depicted here on the right. Bright Author Connected allows the same features as Bright Author, but with some substantial enhancements. First of all, it's available for the Mac. And for all you Mac users out there, I know that that's got you standing up and applauding. Uh, it's been one of the complaints of many of our users for some time that Bright Author was not available to run on, on the Mac OS. It is now. Bright Author Connected will run in the Mac OS. So you can get it either for Windows, the Mac, and there's a browser client, which I'll show you as we get going today. But a very, very important distinction here to be made is that they are separate applications. Uh, presentations you build using the new Bright Author Connected cannot be opened and used in the original Bright Author. We do allow presentations from the original Bright Author to be imported and converted to the new presentation format supported in Bright Author Connected. So we have provided a path to upgrade from Bright Author to Bright Author Connected. But anything you build from scratch in Bright Author Connected cannot be moved over to the original Bright Author. Now, my topics for today are very, very simple. This, is, well, this will be a straightforward presentation of capabilities. We are going to talk about getting the new Bright Author connected up and running on your machine. I have here, you can see in my camera view, which I'll pop full screen here in a minute, but you can see in my camera view, I've got a BrightSign Media Player set up here in my office. Uh, it's brand new out of the box. It's never been used before. Uh, and so my goal is to show you sort of step one, step two, step three, how you get a brand new BrightSign Media Player out of the box and up and running. This media player, I've obviously I've got it connected to power and to network, and I've got it connected to a display, as you can see. But it's and it's been turned on, but the memory card is not yet inserted. It's, it is brand new, out of a box. Once we get the player into my uh, network and up and running, then I'll go through the basics of building presentations and scheduling those presentations. Today, we don't have time to to really deep dive into advanced features. There are um, webinars on our website and tutorials on our website on many of these advanced features and we occasionally run uh, webinars on advanced topics but today is not a, a day for advanced topics today is a day for getting out of the box with the new suite of tools that we've made available and that's it for PowerPoint I'm going to quit PowerPoint and uh, first show you where the download is available if you go to our home page brightsign.biz and a reminder that we are a dot biz we're not a dot com uh, brightsign.biz on the downloads page or here on the product page under software you'll see bright author connected or bright author we go to the bright author connected page and you'll see download links for both the mac and for the and for the pc i'm using a windows machine here and so i'll run you uh, i'll show you the windows version but to be honest they're identical you cannot tell the difference between them we've been very meticulous in assuring that the user experience is absolutely the same, whether you're on a Windows machine or using a Mac. Uh, once you download and install the application, it's a very traditional sort of download and install. Um, 
it starts and looks like this. Now I am logged into my personal network. Uh, I'll show you more about that in a moment. But what I want to do is get this media player up and running that you see here uh, sitting on my desk. In the old days, you may remember that you used Bright Author. <laughs> I'll get in trouble with our marketing people if I refer to it as the old days. Um, we, we still support Bright Author and the legacy installation, so we're not turning any of that off. But using a new Bright Author, setting up a player is quite a bit easier. It, it's a lot easier, to be honest. Um, in the original Bright Author, you had to build so called setup card images and copy files to a card and go insert that card in your media player. That's no longer the case with Bright Author uh, Connected. The new Bright Author Connected is able to find media players um, by virtue of a provisioning record, and I'm going to show you how that's done. So there's two or three steps here. I'd like to provision my player so that it finds its way home, finds its way into the correct content group, and starts to run a presentation that uh, is built for that group. Much like the original Bright Author, media players can be arranged in groups. And you'll see here that I currently have three media players already in my network in a group that I've called the default group. But I also have here a home office group that we'll use today that has no media players in it right now. We're going to bring this new media player into my home office group. The Three players that are up and running here are happy. They're all showing green and functioning perfectly. Um, and you can see here a total of three and the break, breakdown of the content groups where players can exist. The home office group is where we'll put this player. Now, let me stop my screen share momentarily because I'd like you to see full screen my camera. And you'll note that the media player has four lines of text when it boots uh, without a memory card. Down at the bottom, you see the model number. In my case, it's a model XT1144. You also see the local IP address assigned um, in, in my home office network here. Everything is DHCP. So that's the IP address this player received. Uh, the third line is the key line. That's the player's serial number. That's the number you need to know. We also print it on the box. So you don't have to start your player to find it. It's printed on the box the player ships in. It's also on the label on the bottom of the player. If you were to turn the player over and look at the bottom, you can find its serial number. The serial number is what you need to provision this in advance. And then that last line is the uh, current operating system version of the media player. In my case, it's running uh, 8.0.146, which I think is the current version of the operating system. So I'll start my screen share again. And we'll go, um, when Bright Author Connected starts, you, you land on sort of this dashboard. And we're gonna go to the admin section here where we can build provisioning records. Now, before this session began, I built a default provisioning record. And I'll show you later in the session how to build those. We're simply going to take advantage of it right now. We go to device provisioning. And you see the three devices I currently have, we're going to add a device. And here's where the serial number is key, D7E86X0001. That's the serial number of the media player here in my home office. And it's just simply a, it happens to be an XT1144. And this is in my home office. I'm gonna call it uh, my player. This is all I need to know, and really this is all I need to know because I can, uh, the serial number, the rest is I, I can name as I wish. The player's serial number is key. When I add the device, it inherits the default provisioning setup, a default setup. Now if I had other setups ready to go, I could select this player that I'm provisioning and apply a different setup record. I don't have one right now. Um, so we'll use the default, but I will later show you how to create that setup record. Anyway, this is what I've done, and this is all I've done. What will happen? The player will boot with a blank memory card. The player will use the internet connection it has and make contact with the bsn.cloud service, specifically our provisioning server sometimes called the B deploy server. 
The player phones home and says, hey, I'm here, I'm new, this is my serial number, do you know about me? The provisioning server finds this provisioning record for the media player and says, yes, I do know about you. You belong to this network and should join that group. So I'm going to um, show you the memory card that I have for my player sitting right here. Here's the memory card, a, a, a micro SD card. There's nothing on it. I'm going to eject that memory card. As you can see, there's nothing, there's nothing here. So I'm going to eject it and stick that blank memory card in my media player. And this is key. The memory card is blank. There are no files on it. So uh, I'll stop my screen share so that you can watch what happens here full screen. Here I am with my blank memory card. The player gets busy. The busy light starts to flash. The screen goes away. And watch what happens as this player finds its way home. Uh, there's some sunlight here through the window, but I've close the blinds here to try to make this better. So notice there's a screen that disappeared after a moment because the provisioning service answered and that message you saw setting up a player popped through very quickly. Now the player is rebooting. So my LG display here is saying, hey, there's no signal. So that's a signal lost. We'll just stand by here while the player finds its way in. Uh, the player will reboot probably at least twice as it finds its way home. So good reason here to just watch how this happens. So your expectation um, of how this goes. And I see a chat question. Is this the same when you're using uh, just Bright Author Connected and free? It is, but if you don't have a, a content cloud account, you won't be able to publish content to it, but you'll be able to do the setup. So stand by on that. I'll show you more about that. Someone asks if a player is already registered. That means that that serial number already exists in the provisioning service, probably associated with another network. And resetting the player won't solve the problem because that the provisioning service has a hold of that record. It suggests that the player has been provisioned already to another network. And the key to solving that is to delete the provisioning record in the other network. Um, Static IP addresses can be assigned, but then you've got to you've got to take a different approach, a slightly different approach. Let's just wait while this one finishes. BSN.cloud setup is in progress. It says, please wait for the setup to finish. Um, it's displaying the serial number again in the operating system version. We'll just stand by here. Won't be long, I promise. But I really wanted you to see this so that when you do it, your expectations, you'll have the right set of expectations. So the player's been in touch with the provisioning service, downloaded uh, a configuration. Essentially, the files we used to have to put on the, the card manually have now been downloaded, and the player will reset itself. So one more reboot, and the player should join my network. In fact, I think I can uh, sh go back to sharing my screen. And you can keep an eye on that in the small uh, video window. Let's open up Bright Author here and look at my dashboard. And I see that the player has in fact shown up. I now have four devices in my network. And as I look, there it is. The player I just provisioned has appeared in my network. Now it's still uh, in the process then of joining the content group it belongs to. So if we look at the net network of devices by group, we'll see that I've got all four devices here in the default group because I used my default setup. We'll move it to the home office group in a minute. So we'll keep an eye on that player, but you see that it's here. Now, someone asked about setting up a player using a static IP. In order for the provisioning service to work and automate this process, the player needs to connect to the internet. A brand new player out of the box can only do that in a DHCP world. So 
to assign a static IP address, you'll need to actually pre-build your setup on a card and put your card in the media player, much like you used to do the old way. And on the admin page, you simply go to device setup and build your setup. And part of building your device setup can be including network options here of setting up static IP address information. The default for a media player is that it's set up, uh, is that it's DHCP out of the box. All right, so my media player is alive. It will reboot in a moment. I'm not going to uh, bother it right now. Let's take a look at getting a presentation running in the home office content group so that we can move the player into that group. So a quick tour here of the dashboard. First of all, I'm logged into my network. I could sign out, and if I do sign out, uh, I'll, have, I'll be prompted to enter my username and password again. We tried to make it easy to switch to different networks. If I have privileges on more than one bsn.cloud network, they'll all list right here, and I can quickly move from one network to another. Here, I just moved to a different network where I have a player up and running, switching back to the network we're using today where four players exist. And you see how quickly I was able to switch back and forth uh, between networks that I'm part of. Oh, I see my player rebooting. It's about to uh, do its final setup step. From this page, from this dashboard, I get a quick link to see the status of all my media players. I also have quick links to building content and managing schedules. A very, very key feature of this dashboard and of Bright Author Connected is this switch here at the top of the screen that says local content, bsn.cloud content. Interesting, I've got, a, I've got a message on screen that I've never seen before. Failed to connect to bsn.cloud, huh? Well, that's exciting, that's never happened before. Of course, it would happen live during a webinar. We'll address that in a moment. Um, you know, it never fails, right? When you're trying to do something live in front of everybody. <clears throat> A few questions are popping in here. Um, can you roll a player back to the old Bright Author? Yes, you can. You simply have to reset the player and delete the provisioning record. If you don't delete the provisioning record, the provisioning server is going to bounce it right back in. So delete the provisioning record and then reset your player. Groups only apply to content. That's correct. And how many players can you add? Is there a limit? No, there's no limit. Um, truly no limit. We have customers with thousands and thousands of devices. I have four in my network. Okay, now let's talk about building a new presentation. Here I built, before my uh, presentation began, a slide that I wanna show. This slide gives you an idea of how we think in terms of assets and, and presentations and then scheduling content. I call this the content hierarchy. It's just a personal approach to this. The foundation of every presentation is an asset. Oh, look, my player did uh, recover. So whatever failure happened was transient. My player is now live online and running the presentation that's in the default group. So good. My player recovered itself. Um, assets. That's the foundation of any presentation. A presentation is a collection of images, of slides, of graphics. Uh, could be links to web pages. Those are assets. Those assets get built into a presentation, which includes information about how the assets should be used, uh, in what order they should run in the playlist, or um, or how the zone should be laid out on screen. And then finally, the schedule. The schedule is at what point should which presentations run. If you keep this sort of hierarchy in mind, then that will serve you well as you build. So I'm going to build a new presentation. And in preparation, I've built, I also created this graphic. This graphic on my desktop simply a simple little graphic that says setup complete, home office, nothing else to this. It's just a single slide. I'm going to use this in a presentation that I build. Let's start a new presentation. Now notice I'm working in the cloud. I can choose to work locally, and my cloud content gets grayed out, which means I'll build locally. 
But if I work in the cloud, I need to take this asset that I built and bring it up. So I'm going to upload new media, this asset that I built, and say upload. And it's going to go into this folder. So here's, here are my folders. And I'm just going to put it here in the shared incoming folder. That's where I'm going to put it in the shared incoming folder and say upload. So that asset went up. It was a small asset, went up quickly. There was a little status message here that showed up, but I can also check here that my content upload completed successfully. That image moved up just fine. So if you're ever in doubt as to whether a transfer has occurred and the message disappeared too quick, this little icon here in the top right that looks like a pair of arrows shows you the status of the transfer you just accomplished. So that asset now exists. And if I look at my content library, in the media library, in the shared folder, in the incoming folder, there's other stuff, but there's the asset I just uploaded. There are other assets that I've uploaded in prior sessions, some video files and some audio files, uh, but there's the image we just built. So now let's build a new presentation using that asset. I'll call this my webinar training presentation. Right off, I remembered everything else about my last use of this. So I'm simply going to say, okay, notice I'm working in the cloud. I'll just say start. And I'm dropped in the layout. I'm going to leave the layout as it is. I could here mess with the layout by adding different zones, but I'll just keep this nice and simple. Let's go to the content link here and navigate to that folder, that incoming assets folder and here down below you see the assets that we were just looking at including the asset I uploaded. So to build a playlist I drag assets into the playlist and if I drag more than one asset say here's a video file it's a movie trailer I downloaded notice that the asset that is a still image gets a timer where I can decide how long it will be on screen. Let's have it on screen for 10 seconds. Then the video file plays until the file ends. So notice as my playlist constructs, there's a piece of glue between assets. An image asset gets a timer. A video asset just simply gets a, what we call a media end event. So let's keep this playlist very simple, but I think you can see that I would drag, I can navigate to other folders where I have other assets images or otherwise. Let's grab another image. Let's take this uh, image of a sunset at Pismo Beach. And it has a six second timer, which I'll leave at six. So the graphic we built, a video file, six um, uh, image of P Pismo Beach. Notice what else I can do. As I select items, they preview over here. So as I select an item, it previews. This is true of video assets as well. If I select this video asset that's up in the cloud, I can preview it here to make sure it is in fact the asset that I want to include. So I'm previewing assets that have uploaded into my bsn.cloud account, and I'm then choosing whether or not to use them in this presentation. All right, this presentation is done for now. It's just three simple assets. It's called my webinar training presentation. I'm going to save it. Now, back to the dashboard, I'm gonna to go to the schedule. And remember, um, a really quick review here of my content groups. I've got four content groups. My default group that has four players in it right now, and then three other groups. Here's the home office group. No players in it yet, we're about to move one in. So back to the schedule. Let's look at the schedule for the home office group. Let's remove what's there. The schedule is now clear. Here are presentations that have been built, including the one we just built just now, the webinar training presentation. I'm going to drag it onto the schedule and set it to run all day, every day. That will flood the calendar with this event. Now, I'll come back to a little more scheduling uh, information here, a little more scheduling capabilities, but 
just for now, let's keep it simple. This presentation I built that had, if you remember, um, this is complaining I haven't published anything, but that, that's okay. I'm gonna just come back here and re review this really quick. All it's got is these three assets. That's the presentation. So we're going to schedule that to the home office group, removing what's there, grab this new item, set it to run all day every day. The moment I hit publish, this calendar of presentations will be sent to all the players in the home office group. So I'll hit publish. We see that Bright Author's talking to the service. That status message is gone, but if I doubt, I can simply look that publish completed successfully. All right. Well, that's all well and good that I've got something running in that group, but there's there are no players in that group, right? That home office group, when I look at my groups, it has no players in it. So let's go to this group where that player we set up today exists. Simply select it. And here you see one of the paradigms that starts to flow through the whole application. And that is that whatever I select, the properties appear here on the right. We'll select this group, this player that's sitting here in my home office. And if I have any doubt about which player that is, I can confirm it by looking at the serial number. Select it. And move it to the home office group. Changing group, that player's been updated. It now belongs to this group. You can see my camera. It won't be long, uh, probably a minute or less before the player um, is notified that it belongs to a new group and therefore should download a new presentation and schedule to run. So we'll just keep an eye on that here with the camera. But while we do that, let's take a look at some of the other things I could have done on the schedule. You also notice that I can get to the dashboard or I can just choose to navigate directly to presentations, schedule, network. It's all available here. Now I mentioned earlier that we have a browser client for all of this. I'm gonna open up my browser where I was on our home page, and I'm gonna to go to bsn.cloud. Oh look at the camera, the, the presentation that we built is now running on my media player. So that was less than a minute. I'll log in using my uh, bsn.cloud credentials. This is uh, exciting. Join the same network. Here I am in a browser, side by side with the downloaded client. Here's the client, here's the browser. Uh, can you see a difference? I can do the exact same things using nothing but a browser. The only thing that's missing is this local switch. In the browser, the local switch doesn't exist because there's no such thing as working locally when I'm in a browser, I'm connected to the service. But here are my players. Here's the schedule for the home office group. Everything we did and everything we can do here in the local client can also be done in a browser. Now, if you don't use the content service, then the browser view is very, very different because I can't build content presentations. Let me switch to a different network. This is a content cloud account. This, I'm sorry, a, a, a control cloud account. There is no content capability here. I can see the player that's there and I can see its status, but there's no ability to manage content if I don't have a content cloud account. But switching to my full content cloud account, I have all the capabilities that I have here in, in the local client. So let's look at the schedule for the home office group. As you can see in the camera window that the player's running uh, the presentation we built. Here's the presentation schedule of events. And let's grab another project and drop it on here for Friday uh, around lunchtime. Notice what Bright Author Connected did. It maintained the other event and set this event up as an interrupt. This is handy because most of our customers don't want 
presentations to simply run. Uh, I'm sorry, they'll, they'll want presentations to run 24 seven. They don't ever want their screen to go blank. So you'll schedule a basic presentation to run all day, every day, and then have the occasional interruption in the schedule to handle those special events. Maybe the visitor will visit, a, a very important guest will be at your company on, on Thursday afternoon. So you've built a special presentation to welcome that visitor uh, in your lobby, on your lobby screen. So when you drop something on here, it, right, author's smart enough to recognize that this should be an interrupt. Whatever the presentation, whatever this schedule is, when I have it as I want it to be, I simply hit publish. And that presentation, set of presentations, that schedule of presentations will be updated. You see the transfers taking place. If I want to double check, I see that published ran just fine. So the players in the home office group now have this schedule of presentations to run. Today is Wednesday the 6th, so there's no interruptions today. On Thursday the 7th, we have this interrupt at um, uh, 1800 hours. You're gonna have to learn military time. We display this all in a 24 hour clock. That's six o'clock in the evening. Uh, let's move that up in the day. Let's edit this from six. Let's make it uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. That's 1400. So I'll edit this to 1400 and we'll have it run uh, just for two hours to 1600 there. You see, I can edit that manually. Whoops. I must have hit a key. I want this to be 14. Hundred to sixteen hundred. There it is. Oh, something's happening here. Interesting. I'll uh, fuss with that later. Let's just drag it and drop it right in here at fourteen. Fourteen, and I should be able to just edit this to a different end time. Let's go fourteen to fifteen. There, it did. I don't know what was happening there before. And I'm also able to edit the minutes. I can go this to 1530 if I wish, and it'll run from 14 until 1530. I also have the option to set these up as recurring events. I want this to happen uh, every day with no end date in mind, meaning just run this out every day into infinity. Or I can set this to run just on certain days of the week. Um, I can choose which days of the week. Maybe I want this to run only on Friday. So there it is, set for Friday. Let's look at next week. There it is, on Friday next week. Let's pick a random date on the calendar. Let's move to uh, August, the week of August 24th. Here we are the week of August 24th, and we see that that event is still there on Friday jump quickly back to today. So you've got uh, some flexibility here. I'm simply going to uh, leave it as it is, choose publish. Right author talks to the service and the service talks back. So about the network. Here are the four players in my in my network. Maybe I'm not, for example, these players are not here with me in my home office. Let's take a look at this player right here. If we go to the little gear toolbox, I get diagnostics on that player. I can see that that player has been up and running for 14 days since it was last booted. If you have a question, just type it into the Q&A or into the chat. Uh, Andy is watching those. Um, this player's been up for 14 days. There's its local IP address. And I can move to the snapshots link here and ask for a screen capture off that player. There it is, a screen grab off that media player. Go back to the office here. I'm back to my network of all players. Here's the player that's uh, here in my home office right now. Let's do the same for it. This player's only been up for 22 minutes because we just got started, right? Let's get a snapshot off of that as if I'm not there. Keep an eye uh, 
is you see in my camera view, you see what the player's doing. And as I request a snapshot, you'll see that those snapshots are in fact grabbed in real time. That's a real time grab off the player as it's running in that, in that instant. I can see remotely the on-screen status of any player at any time. Now, um, a few questions are being popped in here. Let me see if I can get through some of these. Um, the local content and BSN content are not showing. Uh, that's, if you don't have that switch, it's because you, it's likely that you're not signed into a network. Um, someone asks if all players in the home office group will get the same presentation. The answer is yes, they will. And that's the whole point of a content group. The reason we give you the ability to create content groups is so that you can in mass update players. Maybe I'd like all the players in this group to run the presentation we just built. Well, let's go to the schedule. Let's switch to that default group. There's what's running there now. I'll remove it. Let's grab the presentation we built today, set it to run all day, every day, and publish. All the media players in the default group will receive this schedule of content. That's the whole point of these content groups, is that I'll be able to schedule to long uh, to large groups of players. Question is, can I get a snapshot every so many minutes? No, that's not automated. The, the point of a screen grab is that you can go get it on demand to see what that player is doing. Um, there's been some discussion of adding that as a feature, but it's presently not a feature. Diagnostics are enabled by default uh, when you connect to BSN.cloud. Uh, the question about scheduling something that's not necessarily time-based. Well, that's hard to do and a more advanced topic. I won't say it can't be done, but there's we don't have an opportunity to answer that in today's session. Um, there's, there's not enough there. Okay. Um, so a quick review, and then I'm going to dig into just a little more detail on building new presentations. Provisioning a device is handled by entering a record on the provisioning table. That allows the player to find its way home. Let's build a new player setup. For example, the gentleman asked earlier about getting my player set up uh, with a static IP address. Let's say I need to do that. On advanced network options, first of all, let's give this a name. We're gonna call this a static setup for uh, my media player at my home office. And I'll come here to where I can enter static IP address information, 10.0.0.10, whatever. Subnet mask, 255, 255, 255, zero. Let's use Google's, uh, no, the gateway is going to be on the local LAN, probably 10, 0, 0, 1. And a DNS, we'll use Google's, 8.8.8.8. .8 so I left a dot out here. <laughs> and I, <laughs> fingers on the right keys. 8.8.8.8. So there I've set up static information. Um, I need to save this setup files and I would probably normally save them direct to a memory card. Uh, let's create a folder on my desktop here. Let's create a new folder that I'll call setup and save these files to the setup folder. There's the folder I just built. Here are the setup files. The, I would copy these files to a memory card, put that card in the player and the player will set up with a static IP address but it will join my network and join the default group. Now I could have had it join any group, but all of this information was inherited in that setup. I'm logged into a network. I've got a group selected. I set up my configuration, put that card in the player and the player will boot and join that group. 
Also, very, very, very important is to note that I can use Bright Author to set up a media player into one of our content management partners' services. So maybe you use the Carousel Cloud from Tightrope. Maybe you use AppSpace. Maybe you use Embix or Signage Live or Reflect or Reach or Triple Play or Wallboard or Zincro. Not all, but many of our content management partners have enabled their service with our provisioning service. So if I have an Embix account and I want my player to set up and join Embix, I can do so via a provisioning record to do that. Put that player out in the field, put a blank memory card in the player, the player will phone home to the provisioning service, find the record, find that it belongs to an Embix account, and it will join that account. I hate to leave anybody out, but this is supported by almost all of our content management solution partners. So it's Bright Author could be used to get your player set up into the bsn.cloud service or to one of our partner CMS. You simply choose the partner and add your configuration to the setup library. Let's do that. Let's call this my, uh, let's call this my MVIX, MVIX setup. Um, I want it to be DHCP. So MVIX, I want players that get the MVIX package to join my MVIX account. I add this to my setup library. Done. I now have a new provisioning record. If I look at my device library, I have a new provisioning record that will set up players to my MVIX network. If I wanted to move one of my players to that record, I would choose it, apply the MVIX setup, and then using the remote diagnostic tools for that player, on the control page, I can force the player to reprovision, to provision itself. Now, I don't want this player to do that, so I'm not going to hit update. I'm not going to force that player, but I can literally kick this player out of the .cloud account and connect it to my MVIX account. Let's get back to the provisioning record for that device because I don't want it actually to do that. I don't, I don't even want to do it accidentally. So there we go. That's all back to normal. Um, for those of you who've used Bright Author, the legacy Bright Author, and have used our media players, what I just showed you there is a dramatically powerful tool for managing players. Um, testing content services. Most of our partners offer free trials. To get a player up and running with one of those partners is as Simple as creating a provisioning record and sending it, setting up the player to use that provisioning record, and the player will join that service and join that network. All right, I covered the basics of building a new presentation. Here's my library of presentations that I've uploaded into the cloud. I can go get the one we worked on today and I can modify it. Let's take that video out webinar training presentation and publish this. Uh, let's save the changes. Continue. It was warning me that this presentation's in use. Let's send this to my home office group. And it's warning me that I'm about to update what was running there. So, Don't need to save that. All right. We've covered device activation. We've covered building presentations. We've covered managing schedules. We've covered building provisioning records and moving players to different networks, including partner service networks. Now, I realize I haven't been able to answer everybody's question. We just don't have time to get real deep, but I'm gonna take a look at see what 
I may not have covered. Let's see. Can I register players to Bright Author Connected after already getting them set up in the third party CMS? That's a good question. I've never tried doing that. I'll, that's a question I would send to the support team. I don't know the answer to that question. Someone's having difficulty troubling. That's um, uh, difficulty publishing. I would bring that up with support. I've not had the problem you describe here. If you only have a control cloud, you will not be able to create device groups. That's correct. Uh, device groups belong to the content cloud side. Is there any reason to use legacy bright author? Well, uh, yeah, we're not 100% feature complete yet. There's still a few things bright author, the legacy bright author can do that the new bright author connected can't, but we're catching up as quick as we can. If a player is already registered, and I answered this question earlier. If you're trying to add a provisioning record and you're getting the message that, that device is already provisioned, that means there's already a provisioning record for that device in some other network and you have to find that record and delete it. That's a security uh, feature. The idea is we don't want people to be able to yank your player from you. What if I guessed the serial number of your player and set up a provisioning record in my network? it wouldn't be right for me able to take for me to be able to take that player from you so once a provisioning record exists in a network you own that player and the only way to get that player moved is to delete the provisioning record where it was and create a provisioning record where you want it to be there can only be one provisioning record for a device all right so um, it's time to wrap up I'll send a link to this recording and um, let me go through this chat really quick, see if there's anything else I can get to. Someone's asking about doing a setup for SSI for wireless. Let me show you that really quick. Um, create a device setup, it's under network options. Oh, interesting. I'm not seeing the ability to set up wireless there either. It's grayed out. Huh. I'm going to have to ask support that question. Sorry, you stumped me. Uh, I haven't had to set up a wireless player here in my home office, so I haven't tripped and fallen over that yet. Uh, the fact that it's grayed out suggests that it might not yet be implemented, but I find that surprising. So don't take that as gospel. I'll uh, see if I can get an answer to that question. Well, thank you all for joining me. We'll get a, a copy of this recording out to you all so that you can uh, have it. And I'll send also some links to where some of our other recordings are. Thanks for joining us again. And uh, watch for an email from me and feel free to hit me back with some of the questions I couldn't get to today. Thank you very, very much for joining us.